In humanity's history, there have always been stories used to terrify or frighten people of various ages or occupations. Children are scared by their peers about monsters which lurk nearby, while adults share stories of similar concern and anxiety, only for a more mature mind, such as spreading local fables of people going missing, or of some particular concern somewhere nearby. But there is also a strand of truth woven into all of these stories. For mech warriors of the Inner Sphere, and even of the clans after their invasion, there is a similar story about one such nightmare hiding on the battlefield. Mech commanders themselves always look at these with concern and fear themselves as well. A rumble of an ICE engine, and the grinding of treads followed by two horrifying blasts, is said to be the end of a legion's number of mechs and their pilots. The fear these pilots put into one another and their commanders is born of a real place. This monster born in the Succession Wars, this creator of coffins, is not a battle mech, but is instead an armored fighting vehicle. Aldous Industries' nightmare is known simply as... The Demolisher. An assault tank weighing in at 80 tons. The Demolisher's terrifying reputation was built almost immediately after its arrival on the battlefields of the Inner Sphere. It owes its creation to the destruction of the Star League Civil War, where Aldous Industries the creators of the Demolisher, were all but annihilated in the fighting. It would re-emerge under the protection of Comstar on Terra, and would begin to operate once more from there, with their Overlord's blessings. They would aim to create a relatively low-cost vehicle, explicitly designed to kill battle mechs, in order to manufacture the vehicle in facilities outside of Terra, and in order to keep its costs low. This machine would be built with incredibly primitive components, but they were entirely geared towards fulfilling a single mission goal. What resulted from this development is one of the most feared vehicles in the entire history of the Inner Sphere, and a product of the Succession Wars explicitly, being built in 2803, meaning that the clans themselves would even be often horrifyingly surprised and neutralized by this beast amongst machines and meat. It would be given the nickname, The Mech Slayer, after only a few engagements in the Inner Sphere, all while largely being deployed by mech-starved forces. The Demolisher became the king of armies on a budget during the brutal wars that would emerge across the Inner Sphere from the time of its introduction, all the way into the Eel Clan era. The appealing element of it wasn't just its raw lethality, driven by two huge cannons on the tank, but by its incredibly low cost. To give context, an urban mech which weighs 30 tons and is only armed with a single AC-10 costs 1.5 million sea bills approximately. The 80-ton demolisher, on the other hand, has four times the damage output and only costs 2.2 million sea bills. It's a radically superior deal to defend a position overall, in almost every respect. The Demolisher was always meant to be a part of militia forces defending mildly populated worlds, or it was meant to be a part of a sophisticated defense force on more densely populated planets, but it was never built with the intention of being a frontline battle tank. This would, unfortunately, change and with some mixed results during the utterly destructive succession wars. This was simply because the technology to build the Demolisher, being largely so simple, meant that these rugged, primitive machines could be pressed into service, and more easily than heavy battle mechs. Or they could be a part of a force that was going to attack a world that might have been able to afford significant mech forces. But the role of the Demolisher as a dedicated mech killer never left its mission statement, even as these tanks were often turned into assault guns out of necessity for lighter tanks and infantry forces, both in the attack and in the defense. What is most fascinating, however, 
is that the Demolisher was built after the departure of the Star League Defense Forces on their exodus, and during the clan invasion, would be seen on the front lines in many cases, defending worlds from the alien society coming to attack the Inner Sphere once more. Laying in ambush or holding streets in the thickest of fighting, these war machines would display that simplicity works, and would take a brutal toll on the clan invaders themselves. Regardless of how advanced a mech was, even during that time, when the two bangs of the cannons go live, no one is safe. Clan lights, mediums, heavies, or even assaults could be felled by simply walking into an ambush or turning down the wrong street, despite their superior weaponry and armor. And what's the best part about that? Until they made contact with them, the clans had never encountered a tank like the Demolisher, beyond perhaps reading it in the intelligence reports from the Wolstergoons at best. To run into one, at close range, would be an experience even the hardiest of warriors would have recoiled at, and many would find the death they sought in battle most assuredly, though perhaps with a modicum less honor than they had wished for. The Demolisher's frame and guns represent the brutal, uncomplicated way of war in the Inner Sphere. There is no need for advanced sensors or enhanced ranges. There is no need even for a fusion engine. There is only a need for armor, fuel in the tank, heavy firepower, and the raw courage of the crews to defend their homes. War doesn't need to be complex. It can be straightforward. The 80-ton Demolisher's features are very simple. This Terran design, built on several worlds, is a staple of the Succession Wars and beyond. It is most definitely a basic design, but by no means is that a downside for this hulking, terror-spreading monster. It has been seen across the battlefields of the Inner Sphere in every major theater since its arrival, and its presence can be felt as soon as someone is aware of it. Due to its standard technologies, it simply has a full 8-ton internal structure and standard control equipment on board. It also supports a 3-ton turret as well, which houses both of its main cannons. Its onboard targeting and tracking system is the Omicron 7, and its communications package is the Omicron 5000. Neither of these confer the Demolisher any bonuses, however. Being a very basic design on purpose, it has no quirks to my knowledge. Well, aside from making the player across from you stare at it nervously every time it's your turn to fire this monster at one of their battle mechs, that is. But that quirk isn't on paper. Powered by an enormous 23-ton GM240 ICE engine, the Demolisher has a maximum speed of 54 kilometers per hour, or 5 movement points in the tabletop game. This means it is relatively slow by battlefield standards, but the Demolisher is not meant to be moving with battle line formations, nor is it meant to be the tip of the spear on most offensives. It is principally meant to either be used as a defensive machine, being deployed in concealed conditions only to emerge and open fire on targets at the worst of times, or it is meant to act as an assault gun, or even a battering ram, with a force that is protecting it on the way to its target. The Demolisher also has treads, meaning that if it fails a piloting skill roll, it can suffer motive damage results, which can be crippling to it, giving it its extremely short range. But this is the cost of bringing such a niche vehicle to the field. The Demolisher, as a tank, doesn't suffer heat from using ballistic weaponry, and its only offensive systems are in fact autocannons in their origins, meaning it requires no heat sinks in order to operate. I have been reluctant to mention what this assault tank has in terms of its twin cannons throughout the script. As for any new players who might see this video, I'd like to imagine the shock and surprise when you find out what this Succession Wars tank is armed with. But we have now reached the point where I must divulge it. The Demolisher is equipped with a pair of turret-mounted 185mm Chemgen guns which are classified as Autocannon Class 20 guns. This means in a single volley, 
Should both cannons hit, it can deliver twin head-clipping weapons into one target. And even without a lucky shot, these will crash into targets, pulverizing them and removing 40 points of armor and internal structure, even into the later eras. This is a catastrophic level of damage for almost any machine in the game. Even the indomitable Atlas will shy from taking these kinds of consistent hits, as it will not take long even to render parts of its impressive plating useless. 20 rounds of ammunition is shared between the two guns, giving it 10 turns of continuous fire, enough to literally evaporate a 100-ton assault mech. This is what sells the Demolisher. These cannons are what makes it a mech killer, whether it be a Sakata scouting too close to a hidden position, a Battlemaster commanding from the front, encountering a Demolisher in infantry in a flanking attack, or even if it is a Timberwolf with a clan warrior facing this beast down at the end of a street. When these pairs of guns sing, everyone listens and trembles. For an 80-ton vehicle, the Demolisher is somewhat underprotected. It comes equipped with 10 tons of standard plating, giving it 160 points of armor, which would already be limited on a 65 or 70-ton vehicle or mech. But this is the trade-off the tank had to make in order to be armed with the heavy guns that it has. It can withstand fairly significant amounts of fire, but it will go down more quickly than a comparable assault tank under many circumstances. Though its turret and front armor can still withstand multiple AC-20 hits, provided no other weapons land at these locations as well. The Demolisher is a terror for its time. Not meant for long-range engagements, and not meant for open battles of maneuver, this battering ram and ambush predator is a monster to deal with when inside of a city or in a forested area. Even in a significantly hilled region, it can protect itself enough to have an opportunity to strike. When the attacks come from this monster, its two mouths will open and bite its opponents until they are simply no more. It is one of the most horrifying vehicles of its era, and it is rightly feared both in-universe and without, despite its clear shortcomings. The thing about shortcomings is that they can be compensated for by smart deployments, good tactics, and ruthless cunning. And the Demolisher will annihilate anything that makes the mistake of getting a bit too close. Over the course of 350 years since its original deployment, the Demolisher has had a number of variations appear. Outside of the original, there are a total of nine configurations that have emerged using the original chassis. In this video, I will be covering three of them. Some of these reinforce what the Demolisher was built to do, but with new technology. And other variations try fundamentally to change what the Demolisher is. Perhaps one of the best things realized for the Demolisher was recognizing that it was a platform that could be easily used for almost anything as a delivery system. Especially as more advanced technologies became widely available. Its twin heavy autocannons can be replaced with just about any other major system available. And most appropriately, one of the best switches is to take the Demolisher from being a localized ambush predator, or escorted assault gun, and turning it into the ultimate long-range artillery machine. But, in terms of quality, while not as impressive as, say, a Long Tom mobile artillery piece, the Arrow 4 upgrade of the Demolisher is in its own right a horrifying machine, installing twin Arrow 4 systems in place of its autocannons, and with exceptional amounts of ammunition as well. It does add some medium lasers to try to safeguard the machine in close, but frankly if the enemy breaks through to it, it would be more or less doomed regardless. But that's not its role. This demolisher is not meant to be a close range support vehicle, as I mentioned, it's an artillery piece. To be able to afford this extra room for tonnage, it installs a fusion engine, which also gives it heat sinks for its backup weapons. This does increase its costs by over double to produce, as compared to the base model. But this artillery tank has a very clear role, and is much less expendable. Friendly assets, infantry, mechs, light vehicles, which provide it with coordinates, will allow this devouring beast to launch strike after strike on a target potentially over 30, 
which will allow it to completely annihilate whatever was holding up a friendly advance. Fortified positions, slower mechs, infantry, entrenched armor, it doesn't really matter. It's all going to experience the hammer. In other words, it will demolish anyone foolish enough to make itself a target for its enormous missiles. What more could you ask for? Another example of replacing the traditional AC-20s and creating something terrifying is the Demolisher's Gauss Rifle Upgrade Package, which began production in 3053. This monstrosity installs a pair of Gauss Rifles, giving it an incredibly long reach and allowing it to hammer targets with high-velocity nickel-iron shells, each one doing 15 damage. Not only does this retain the Demolisher's brutal head-capping ability, it goes a step further by over doubling its threat range. It means that its ambushes no longer involves waiting until the enemy is close enough to see them only a few hundred meters away. This gives the Demolisher the ability to participate in more open engagements as well, rolling into the open and engaging targets before it can be engaged by lighter and medium mechs. When fully supported, its new cannons play a song of destruction so well that their enemies will hear it regardless of how far away they seem to be. This demolisher is a threat to anything it places in its sights, but it does have some small drawbacks, in the form that should the opposition forces actually get close to it, it is not capable of defending itself in the same way as its predecessor, as its Gauss rifles do possess a minimum range, even if it is only two hexes. It does have other functions as well, once again, it installs a few token medium lasers in order to protect the vehicle in close. It also installs more armored plating, reinforcing the front of the hull and turret, more specifically by 10% on the turret and 20% on the hull. To achieve much of this, its costs go up significantly, as its ice engine is once more removed in favor of a fusion engine, just like its Arrow 4 counterpart. But these changes were, at the time, necessary to turn the Demolisher from a low-cost, near-expendable mech killer over to a sniper and direct-fire support platform using advanced, precise, long-range Gauss weaponry. For many, this is the ultimate Demolisher. After 3060, the Demolisher had competition beginning to appear in the form of the Demolisher II which was built and created by the Lyran Mega Company on Hesphorus, known as Defiance Industries. This tank, built by an unrelated organization, was significantly more technologically advanced than the original Demolisher, using the latest levels of weaponry, and it would continue to be improved upon over time, with its later generation model, the Demolisher 2X, using some of the most bleeding technology around including a clan-made Ultra AC-10 and an improved heavy Gauss rifle. In the face of this competition, Aldus Industries opted to avoid following the same design path as their competitor, making their knockoff equivalent, and they decided to double down on what made the tank so desirable in the first place. They did not attempt to rebuild the Demolisher for the new era by increasing its range, or changing the original's role any longer. Instead, the demolisher of this new era, equipped with an advanced fuel cell engine and further enhanced by an onboard supercharger, is the ultimate reimagination of the original design. With no other weapons, this demolisher is installed with twin Myrdon XL Ultra Type 20 autocannons, with 40 rounds of ammunition. To face down this tank at close range, is to invite nothing short of a catastrophe at best, and death itself in all likelihood. This much volume of firepower hitting any battle mech is just too much for a mech of any weight to handle. If all rounds land on target, it will deliver 80 points of damage to that adversary which is enough to drill through the center torso of almost any mech ever. This variant of the Demolisher also benefits from ferro-fibrous armor and 11 tons of plating, bringing its total protection to 197 points, and making its turret and front armor heavily reinforced. In terms of its distribution and operators, 
it would find a home across the Inner Sphere in every major fighting force. What's most interesting is that House Steiner was the most resistant to taking these on, and bought the fewest numbers due to intense pressure from Defiance Industries, which lobbied hard to instead utilize the homegrown Demolisher too. It is therefore ironic that the Demolisher in fact saved the Lyran Commonwealth by saving the life of the fleeing Trillian Steiner Davian, who had become the appointed successor of Melissa Steiner II in 3143. To give more detail, when Clan Wolf and Jade Falcon were attacking Tharkad and hunting down important targets, most of the Lyran armed forces had folded or collapsed under the intense assault. Clan Wolf's Alpha Galaxy moved on the Royal Palace which was protected by the last remnants of the defenders willing to give their lives for the state. Only three demolisher tanks and a scattering of infantry ground forces were what remained. These brave tank crews knew the surrounding terrain and buildings well, and held firm in their duty. They appeared in ambushes seemingly out of nowhere, coordinating with one another, utterly smashing clan battle mechs before engaging their superchargers to pull back and reposition. Not only did this cost the wolves dearly in their initial advance, but they were evidently such a problem that the entirety of Alpha Galaxy had to deviate from the attack to deal with them. Not only did they suffer their initial losses and setbacks, but a full star of clan battle mechs would be lost further in their pursuit before these brave, last defenders of the crown were killed in battle. Ironically, of course, it was the foreign-built demolishers, and not the Defiance-built demolisher twos, that made this feat possible. Lobbying from Hesphorus to rebuke any tank purchases of the sort may have doomed the state had they not been ignored. Archon Trillian Steiner Davian would escape the palace as a result of this battle. Her life and the uncontested leadership of the beleaguered Lyran Commonwealth owe a debt to this machine designed by Terrans, as well as to the brave crews of the Royal Guards who fought and died against impossible odds to ensure a future for the Lyran state and its people. The Demolisher has earned its place in the history books as being one of the greatest nightmares battle mechs have ever faced, in almost all of its configurations. It is built with a basic principle, that of simply providing pure firepower to dominate a target in a single dimensional way, either in close fire support, long fire support, or indirect fire support, whatever its configuration, it is just easily applied to a heavy, rugged, reliable chassis. This monster stopped mechs in the Inner Sphere dead on their feet running into it. Clan warriors who invaded the Inner Sphere bit off more than they could chew when they walked into the prepared ambushes of this brutal war machine. The people of the Lyran Commonwealth, in the Dark Age and into the Ill Clan era, literally owe their safety in the most significant ways to this enormous tank and the ultimate sacrifice their crews were willing to make in order to save the last remnants of the leadership from total disaster. The Demolisher for any commander is an important asset, but it is to be used wisely and correctly based on its loadout. When employed in the right conditions and backed up by the right forces, it can be a near impossible obstacle for enemies to overwhelm. When placed in the attack, there are few fortifications fixed positions or defensive mechs or tanks that can survive its wrath in any of its forms. The Demolisher is one of the true greats among the history of vehicles in Battletech. I'm in the big mech in front of you. Shoot me even once and I'll tear that beer can you call a mech into scrap. I'll be your babysitter for the next couple of days, so don't get killed. I hate it when my guys get killed.
Thank you for joining me here today. If you enjoyed this back-breaking, mech-slaying, terror-inspiring, clan-busting battle tank, it will be available in the upcoming Mercenaries Kickstarter by Catalyst Game Labs for the tabletop game, which goes live on March 23rd. I will leave a link in the description to the backer kit page, which has more information about the Kickstarter itself and has a sign-up column if you're interested in the Kickstarter for when it goes live. I myself am going to be getting some demolishers, let's just put it that way. But if you enjoyed the video itself, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. I do my best to provide updates frequently, and you'll be happy with the content, I think. If you wish to support me further, there is a YouTube member program as well. When you hit the join button to become a member, you take an extra step in supporting what I do here. I mean it every time I say it. But the content on this channel is really only possible because of viewers like you. And with that, I will catch all of you in the comments section below.